of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, liberty, and justice for all. Liberty, justice for all. Well, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, I'm taking the place of Jim, Jim Hinman, who's normally the chairman of this, uh, of this board. Uh, I found that out when I walked in tonight. If I'd known sooner, I would have worn a tie, you know, to be the, in the role. Uh, a few uh, housekeeping details before we actually get into the meeting uh, or into the cases. Um, the fire exit is located to your left of this room. In the event of a fire, you will be notified by an announcement. If notified, please move in a calm and orderly fashion to this exit. Do not use the elevator. Use either the front or back stairs to leave the building. The meetings are recorded by Secretary Michelle for the purpose of a record and minutes. So please identify yourself each time that you come to the, uh, to the podium and speak into the microphone. The board will follow the items in the order that they appear on the agenda. If you need an agenda, there are extra copies by the door over there. After the case has been called, the applicant and or the representative shall come to the podium, identify himself or herself, state their address, and then present their case. The zoning board members will then have an opportunity to question the applicant. Then the case will be open to public input. Anyone wishing, anyone wishing to speak to the board regarding this application will come to the podium and identify themselves along with their address and direct any questions to the board. Once all public input has been completed, the applicant or representative will be given the opportunity to respond to any public input. Then I will close the public hearing and continue on to the next case. After all the cases have been heard, the board will take a short recess and then return to deliberate each case in order of applicants still present. No further input is allowed at this point, but you may stay and listen to the deliberation. If you wish to leave, you can find out the results by calling the Planning and Zoning Department tomorrow morning after 9 a.m. So, Michelle, can we have the first case then? Did I see? Yeah, but it says here you are. I know. <laughs> Donna, Donna. Sure. ZB 1306-1, upon the matter of request by Pierce Engineering, acting as agent for Mavis Tire Corporation for an area variance to install a freestanding sign exceeding maximum allowable square footage on premises 1502 Eastridge Road, also known as 1490 Eastridge Road, Mavis Tire Co. Muffler and Brake in a C commercial district. Go right ahead. Good evening. My name is Richard Pierce, P-I-E-R-C-E. -E. Uh, I am the principal in Pierce Engineering, 3975 Amber Road, Syracuse, New York. We are the engineer of record and agent for Mavis Tire, DBA, Coal Muffler and Tire. Uh, it's just a very quick background on Mavis Tire. Uh, most people in upstate and central New York know Coal Muffler. Uh, a few years ago, they were partnered with Mavis Tire, uh, which had had a base in Long Island. Uh, their corporate headquarters are in Millwood, uh, Westchester County. Uh, for a number of years now, they've been in the process of rebranding their stores, the coal stores, and in rebranding, uh, bringing them up to code and generally making them much more uh, appealable to the public. They redo the showrooms, uh, make the restrooms uh, ADA compliant, uh, add lighting, and generally give it a good scrubbing. In the case of this store, uh, we, we have been doing the Rochester area for a year or two now. Uh, I think Webster is pretty well complete by now. 
Uh, we finished Greece, and uh, I think the next one will be Mount Hope in Rochester. In the case of this store, um, in addition to the normal rebranding that we do, uh, the company has taken on uh, a number of exterior improvements working with the DOT. We have eliminated two of the curb cuts. There were four. And uh, we took the opportunity, since I think the DOT was working in the area, to uh, go through their request procedure. And they were more than happy to have us close down two of the four curb cuts so that we uh, will be one entrance off of East Ridge Road, uh, entrance and exit, and one entrance and exit off of Kings Highway. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have plans. The DOT is going to do the green grass between the sidewalk and their curb. We will do uh, similar green grass between our curb, new curbs that we're going to install, and the sidewalk. So there will be a general improvement there. Um, we have been working with Donna in the past uh, to comply with the dumpster stockading and general improvement of the area. We did make improvements a year or two ago. Um, I understand that uh, we've let it go, and so we're going to make improvements on that and uh, clean up the area. Uh, if you check with any of the other Mavis operating stores, I think you'll find that they are uh, they make every effort to be a good corporate neighbor to the neighborhood. It's only in their benefit to provide a warm, friendly, attractive area for, um, for the public because they're selling tires. That's their business. Um, in this case, um, we would like to install a pylon sign which shows the Mavis tire and coal muffler uh, logos. Uh, the company very much wants to keep uh, coal muffler in the public's eye. Uh, coal muffler has years of goodwill in the area and are easily recognized by the public in this area. And for that reason, they want to keep coal muffler um, presented there. And so they have this freestanding <coughs> uh, co-branded sign that is uh, approximately 71 square feet in area, which exceeds uh, the uh, permitted I think our permission by the mathematics is 32 square feet. Um, so uh, that's why I'm here tonight, to uh, appeal to be allowed for this sign. The location of the sign is shown on the site map, uh, which I believe you have. Uh, I have a copy here, full size, if the ones you have are hard to read. And I think that's all I have to say on it. This is the site map that you're referring to? Uh, yes, sir. It may be a little difficult to read at that size. I have a full skies, uh, easier to read uh, map here. I'd be glad to share. Seems fairly clear to me, anyway, uh, that the, uh, the sign will be sort of uh, perpendicular to Ridge Road East. That's correct. And it looks like it is kind of set back from the cor a corner a little bit. It's not right on the very corner of the street. Or the, uh, no, or we, we brought it back to the um, mandatory setback. And uh, my question about this, and then I'll defer to the other members of the committee. Uh, there was a page here that showed various models of the sign. And it, it's, I am assuming that on this one, there's a, the, the way the top sign looks like, that would be the Mavis That's portion correct. of it? That's correct. And then coal muffler would be under, on the bottom of it? That's correct, sir. Okay. And is that, you think that's one of the reasons why it has to be that high? Um, no, we're pretty flexible on the height. I think the height is uh, predicated on uh, allowing visibility, motorist visibility under it to... Uh, see around the curb and around the curve there we don't want to block anyone's line of vision yeah the height the height so the height meets our code 20 feet that's but okay. it's the square footage square that's footage, right. 71 versus 32 that's the variance that's the only variance like mm -hmm. like the gentleman said they're meeting the 15 foot setback from the property line so that's good 
So what we're talking about is a sign that's, by our code, would have to be just about half of what they're proposing. Yeah, that's about right. Is there at all any flexibility in the size um, for the corporation, for the company? Um, this is the only co-branded sign that we have. Uh, we'd very much like to keep the coal name uh, on the sign, and this is the only size sign that allows that. Now, there are Mavis-only signs, and if we had to, we could go to a 48-square-foot Mavis-only sign. That would not be our first choice, but that would be as low as we could get, and of course that would still require a variance. And just in shrinking the signs down completely, you think the visibility of it won't be well enough? No, I don't think it's that. Uh, I'm not a sign designer, but uh, they have an inventory of standard corporate signs that they use. So they've already purchased and, the signs? And, uh, yeah, the, these are standard uh, signs. Um, it's Wherever you see a co-branded sign, it's the same size. It's a Have they run sign. into the problem with the size of the sign in other towns? Because it seems like most of the towns these days are uh, opting for smaller presentation out at the curb. I certainly been, have. Um, has this just, been an just ongoing? It's an ongoing, well, not every town, but uh, for instance, Webster didn't have a problem with the size, but they have a restriction on the height, so they become a monument sign. There have been cases, Liverpool, another one, where we've made the sign into a monument sign because of a height restriction. But you kept the same size of the sign? You just lowered it? We're, in cases that we could, yes, sir. Uh, and in cases, uh, let me see. Uh, Greece, we were not allowed a variance, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. They may not have a sign. Um, I can't remember all of them. There's been about a hundred. But yes, uh, usually the sign is the reason that I show up at CBAs mostly. Where you have a problem with the sign, you still do have the signage on the building though, correct? That's correct, sir. Yes. Okay. Is there a sign there currently? Anybody know? No, there's not a freestanding sign. They there. haven't had a freestanding no. sign in the no. years ago. Okay. No, but I think the sign in John the building now is coal. Right. Yes, it is. There's no mention of Mavis anywhere. No, at this that's point. right. This, yeah. this particular store, although we do have our construction permit in place, uh, we haven't uh, started construction. I don't believe yet, um, but uh, it will eventually have the straight-up facade with the mission red and teal um, yeah, typical. It's a, good looking, it's a good looking store. I've driven by the one in Greece. Oh, thank you. And it, it, they do look a lot nicer than they were. They, before. they do add to the neighborhood, we think. Yes. And I think after people see them, they agree. <laughs> yep. And did I understand Greece does not have a sign? Uh, I know I was turned down on the, uh, Greece was kind of a little complicated. There had been an appeal granted back in 86 for, um, the wall sign and uh, so we were granted under that for the wall signs I went back for a second appeal and uh, in so many words I was told I get one bite at the apple and uh, <laughs> and uh, so the last I heard that's a very restrictive sign more so than around a quite I believe it's 20 square feet and I don't believe the company would bother the expense of putting a sign up at that side but maybe they will I don't know it's up to them okay for the proposed signs on the building, you will have both brands on the building itself? Correct, sir. Okay, thanks. Are the signs in the building itself going to be lit? So that uh, yes, all the they're, they're back lit, yes. Do you think in the event it came down to not having a sign versus us requesting a smaller sign, uh, do you think that they would just not put a sign up, or do you think they would uh, have some smaller signs made up? Uh, I, it's hard for me to get into the corporate mind, but uh, I was told that if I could not negotiate for the co-branded sign, I would be allowed to plea for the 48-square-foot uh, Mavis-only sign. Uh, the problem with the Mavis-only sign is that people around here aren't that familiar with Mavis. Uh, I have an example of what that sign looks like. I'd be glad to share, but uh, again, that's not my first choice. That's not the corporate's first choice. I, I just wonder, in 
if if there's a way, and I'm sure there is a way, to shrink the whole thing down and keep well, it, keep both. Well, I I've, I've been working with Mavis now for about five years. I I've never seen them shrink the co-branded sign. They have several variations of their Mavis only sign. Some are designed to go on monuments and so on and like that. But I've never seen them shrink the co-branded sign. I think their feeling is that it just isn't worth it because people would have difficulty seeing the, the text. And I, I don't really know. I'm not a retail person. But I, I, there was some thought into that. And I've never, they've never shrunk that sign. Well, if you did go with the 48 square foot sign, you could still have the branding on the store itself. Uh, that's true. Okay. Um, are there any more questions from the board at this point? Okay. Is there anybody here who would like to speak in favor of this application? Yes, come right up. <clears throat> Tom Shagg, uh, 191 Shore Drive. I actually came to speak on an unrelated matter, but anything that we could possibly do to make a merchant more successful on Ridge Road, I would support. And if increased visibility without being unfair to the other merchants will help this person out in the future and to be ex successful in our town, I would be su supportive of that. Thank you. Doesn't talk loud enough. Uh, just as another note, uh, to hold, could you hold on just for a second? We'll finish the yep, uh, input, sorry, and then we, you can respond to everything. Is there anyone else that would just like to speak in favor of this application? <clears throat> Is there anybody who would like to speak in opposition to this application? And now, uh, just an added thing: is uh, historically uh, the company usually sees an uptick of about twenty to twenty-five percent in their retail trade after renovation of one of their stores. So it's, a, and it's, it's an expensive renovation to make, but there is a payback on it, and a payback for the town, too, because it, it is an improvement in the area. So that's, I guess, all I have to say on it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for speaking after the mic. And, uh, it's Donna, right? <laughs> you can have the next case. Yeah, it still is. Okay. ZB 1306 2. Upon the matter request by Thomas A. Conway for an area variance to expand a pre existing non conforming dock 5 by 20 feet, 5 feet by 20 feet, exceeding maximum allowable dock square footage on premises. I tax ID number 077.12-1-55, it's a vacant parcel, in connection with the adjacent property located at 157 Shorewood Drive, Shore Drive, excuse me, Shore Drive, in an R1 residential district. Good evening. My name is Tom Conway, and I live at 157 Shore Drive, and I am the applicant for this variance. And uh, as Donna said, I presently have a, an existing dock there uh, I've had for years, which I had the proper permits to put in. And over the years, uh, we've gotten less water there for, for two reasons. Number one, um, there's a drainage, storm drainage pipe that comes down Titus Avenue Extension and Shore Drive, and it's uh, silting in the uh, west end of the cove. And o over, uh, I think it was last year, uh, the International Joint Lake, Joint Lake Commission had uh, said that they are not going to regulate the lake as they used to, and due to uh, lighter snowfalls, uh, the water has uh, been on a decline, and it's... Uh, been uh, very difficult to keep the, the boat there uh, because of uh, the water is uh, shallow and um, by extending the dock out uh, 20 feet it would get to deeper water and it would give a, uh, a, give me more of a season to, to keep the boat in uh, 
and uh, we could gain a, a fair amount of depth. Now, this the dock configuration does not go out in the cove at all. It doesn't uh, go out. It's just parallel to the shoreline, and um, uh, it, it, it would not, by doing that, it wouldn't obstruct with navigation in any way, and uh, the only other option would be mooring, but it is not an option because that, number one, is wouldn't be permitted under the um, the harbor management law which requires eight feet of water at mean low water and it wouldn't even be close to that in the middle of the cove maybe three feet and it would obstruct navigation and it just wouldn't be the the proper way to go uh, but this the the extension out um, also is five feet wide uh, it makes it a little bit more stable uh, on the dock. It's a floating dock and a little safer when uh, getting in and out of the boat. So um, that's why I uh, went with a five foot width on the end too, not, not to get out there, but to get uh, out on the end of the extension. I just have a question, a couple of questions actually. The property, and I was down there the other day, and the property that we're talking about is not actually in front of your home. It's a section of uh, the shore that's away from the home. Did, how did that, did you buy that separately or? Yes, sir, I did. I bought that uh, parcel uh, um, in 1980, a long okay. time ago. Yeah. But yes, it is a separate parcel and it's, uh, I own it and it's in front of Mr. Shegg's house at 191 Shore Drive. And then the, the question about the dock, that's the, the light-colored tan floating dock that we're talking about, right? Yes. But there, to the, if you're looking out at the water to the left of that, there's another dock with a, a good-sized boat. It is, that looks like it's also on your property. That's correct. So that's your dock also? Yes, sir. I had that uh, since I bought the house, that dock was there. And I've made some, uh, I put the poles in for that boat. And... Uh, uh, had all the proper permits for that, and that boat, I've, <laughs> last two years, I had to pull out in mid-August. Right, uh, it's, it, it because of like the it's, water depth. It's, it's more shallow in that spot. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really getting bad there, uh, but I don't know what to do there. But my question is, is uh, or one other last question, is the amount of dock space you have, because now you have two docks mm -hmm. on one parcel, um, wouldn't that exceed the allowable dock space uh, using the combination of the two docks. I mean, you, 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 if, the question, I guess, would be not so much for you, but for Donna, uh, considering he has two docks there. Yeah, they're pre-existing, not conforming. They were there before these regulations came into place. These are newer laws, the 200 square feet, and if he got permits from DEC, the town didn't even give out permits at, until the, I would say, the late 80s to early 90s. So, but now that if he wants to expand it, that's why we're calling it pre-existing non-conforming. But you're, we're expanding just one of the docks yeah. and looking for the variance of 400, but he's actually got two docks, which are well over the, um, but for the square footage. For purposes you, you of, of the presentation and your evaluation, I know it's, it seems complicated or contrary, but they're both legally positioned, appropriate docks from that pre-existing non-conforming component. And I suppose this is a good opportunity for me to give some background with regard to the application that's being made also. So first of all, it, it's entirely legal and appropriate for you to consider the application for this particular dock individually standalone. The decision has been made that the two docks are pre-existing, non-conforming, they're legal for that property. Now, <clears throat> this particular, um, Mr. Mr. Conway, and, and, and the neighbors and the neighborhood and the town had been involved. And before I, I go even any further, I want you always to remember that I'm not taking a position one way or the other with regard to how your ultimate vote would, would come out. But I do think there's some background on this particular application that's very important. There was a very long and protracted legal dispute with regard to ownership of the properties down on, on Shore Drive. And when I say protracted, it was a lawyer's dream. It was 12 or 13 years old. <laughs> Ultimately, within, I think, the, the past year, uh, the matter was resolved uh, in, in favor of all the parties. It, it seems crazy that after that many years, everybody didn't come together and, and have an agreement. 
And um, I'd say within the last six months, an agreement and a stipulation was entered, which was truly favorable uh, to all of the parties that were involved down there. Um, and in that agreement, I know Mr. Conway has agreed uh, to some easements for some neighbors so they would have access to the water that they might not have had had the lawsuit gone further or the agreement had not been reached. So he was, he was benevolent in a sense that he granted that easement to those, uh, to those neighbors. Um, that gives them use of the property. The town, on the other hand, um, always maintained uh, Shore Drive and had gone through uh, for decades a maintenance of it, but it finally settled the rights in, in terms of the title to all of the property and everything that was involved down there. Now, in the agreement, it was understood that since the parties were exchanging easements and, and various rights to go on the property and off the property and splitting the properties up. Uh, it was understood that one of the last things that needed to be done to comply, not really comply, but just to meet the spirit of the agreement was the application that's before you tonight. Now, in the agreement that, that all of the parties signed, it was understood that the outcome of the application wasn't binding on the town uh, for that agreement to be fulfilled. But at the same time, it, is, it really is the last component, I think, of the agreement that will bring the thing full circle. And my understanding, well, it's not my understanding, that agreement was signed by a number of the neighbors. So um, I know, I know there's, there's some neighbors here tonight, but um, even those that aren't here, um, and I probably should have brought the agreement, but I, 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 just, I got here a little bit late. But I just want you to understand that this was a long, protracted, um, not really a dispute. It was just a matter of understanding whose was what and where. And that was a good question because that sliver of property was part of the question of whose property uh, started and where. And it has been resolved. Um, I think if you looked, you would see the, uh, the wall, the seawall down there along that piece of property. Mr. Conway had that installed you know, at his expense, even though the matter was in somewhat of dispute. So uh, you should consider the dock that's being applied for as a standalone application. And uh, I think, again, without suggesting one way or the other how it should come out, um, this was the product of a lot of negotiating and some ultimately uh, some, some agreements that I think that were really in, on behalf of the town. Well, in, 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 uh, now you've opened up Pandora's box for questions. The addition of the extra dock, obviously you have the two docks there. The, this one's newer, and then you're going to expand it. Is it because you're... The easements of the people that are going to be using it, or are you solely using uh, both docks? I use the one dock solely, the brown dock, and on an occasion I use the other dock to launch a kayak. And uh, late, not even late, in, in the season uh, by probably the end of uh, August, I put a smaller boat on there because I have no water at the other dock, and the other boat I take out in mid-August, uh, the boat you saw. So but I have a smaller boat, a 20-foot, that I put on this dock as well. Yeah, I, I, for just for a month and a half at that. I, I take it you've given your neighbors some easement to use the, do, the the area or not? Yes. And will they be using the dock also? Yes. Okay. You're going to hear from at least one tonight. I know that for a okay. fact. Right. Well, I'm, and, you know, if we're adding dock and you're, everybody's using it, I can understand. Mm -hmm. um, you know the, the the reason you're adding it. The neighbor would actually use it more than I would. I just need, uh, need it for, uh, like I said, the end of the season. He would need it all season. Okay. To accommodate his boat. How many people will have access to the docks? Both of them. Uh, well, just how many easements are there? How many landowners will have one. the right to access it? One. One other. So one, one landowner. The the gentleman that. Uh, in addition Mr. to you. In addition to me, the. Uh, the uh, gentleman, his family that lives opposite uh, where the dock is, 191 Shore Drive, the Shegg family, okay. for that dock. Okay. Well, then not, not the other dock. The only stuff that's on the record is this side of the room. <laughs> But it's not a community dock. I think if that's what you're driving at, it's just if, uh, one dock for um, one, with the one with the family. Okay. Is, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of this application? <clears throat> Tom.
Tom Shegg, uh, 191 Shore Drive. Uh, my home is directly across from the application. And my home is directly across from the uh, area variance application for the dock. And uh, I guess ultimately I would be of the most benefit. Um, as the town attorney <coughs> explained, uh, probably a lot better than I could, um, there were a number of parties involved with the process over the past 12 or 13 years, and uh, everything has kind of come to fruition. Mr. Conway made an offer uh, to me and some of the other parties um, through much negotiation. We came to an agreement. Um, ultimately, my wife and family and I will probably benefit if this application is approved more so than anyone else. It is in front of our home. We'll be allowed to keep a boat there in the summer. Um, Mr. Conway, uh, perhaps the month of August, will have to bring his boat over because the water gets um, its almost non-existent at his other place. Um, so um, I don't think everybody got exactly everything they were looking for. But this is probably, um, everybody's going to get a little something, and it helped bring this matter to conclusion with the help of the town, um, m many people, uh, a long, drawn-out process. And uh, we, we hope that you look favorable uh, on it. It kind of is the last piece to the ongoing puzzle and will hopefully put... Uh, this matter to rest and, and everybody will go on and be all the better for it. Okay. Any Thank questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this application? Seeing none, uh, there, is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Seeing none, we'll close this case and move on to the next one. Okay, thank you. ZB 1306-3, upon the matter request by Charles Foster for an area variance to construct a 24 foot by 24 foot by 12 foot high detached garage exceeding the number of garages allowed on premises 342 Bocard Avenue in an R1 residential district. Good evening. Yes, sir. Uh, Chuck Foster, Charles Foster, 342 Bocard Avenue. I own that property. Okay. Um, this has been a long time coming. Create a little family problems, but that's okay. I really want to knock my garage off my house, put a living room in there, and put a 900 square foot down there. But my wife said no, so I'm out of it. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the garage is going on an area that is pre-existing. That was put in when we moved up here because our grandkids were coming into being and uh, the idea was to keep them off the street because we watched them a lot. And in the process, uh, I got a cut or a curb cut variance and we did a uh, driveway back to a pad and that was their playground. Uh, they're all grown up now, and they're gone. And I keep looking at that pad down there, and I would like to have another garage. Uh, 24 by 24 is about as small as I could stand, because when I get in there, you know, it's going to be still hard to walk around the vehicles in there. Um, I, um, I take good care of my property. My neighbors tell me so. Uh, when we first moved into that place, there was hedges all over, trees growing randomly. It was like a junkyard. But um, I feel very proud of what I've done so far, and what I'd like to do now is complete this and put the garage in, and, all th and there's a shed that's next to it. Um, if you see my print here, the drawing, that shed was moved off of that pad over to that point, and that vacated the 24 by 24 slab. And uh, all three buildings, the house, the shed, and the garage, will all complement each other in color, trim, whole nine yards. 
It all blended in perfectly. Did a lot of work and thought to get to that process. And uh, if you look at the hand drawing that I did, or the sketch one, there's a huge barn on behind it. And that it belongs to the property beside me. That was one of the original homesteads on that street. And uh, it really kind of folds into that building and it's almost transparent. Because it's size to size. And I'm hoping that we can do this and uh, I'm ready to go to work to put the thing up. That's it. Any questions? Oh, by the way, I, I'm seeking no variances for setbacks off the property line, nothing. Uh, we settled that, or I actually built inside all the, or outside of the setback lines. Everything is like eight feet off the fences, not four went then and five now or whatever. And uh, I gave myself a lot of breathing room, whatever I did down there. Your house does look very nice. You're well kept shrubs and nice yard I thank you. took a look at it yesterday you should be complimented thank you um, one question about the shed and again it is a good looking shed and it fits in the in the in the yard but with this big garage do you still have to have the shed along with the garage that you have at the house uh, the shed is built into the property uh, retaining wall fence everything up here it cost me a thousand dollars to move the shed um, I, yes, I would like to keep it. I really would. All right. Yeah. I mean, it looks good. Thank uh, you. It's just, you know, with the both buildings. Um, this will complement in color, shape. Uh, all the roof lines will flow in the same direction on the property. Uh, everything, shingles, siding, it all complement each other. And you had mentioned, I believe, in the notes that you are not going to be using this at all for commercial use. Well, I hear that question come from you to a lot of people on television. <laughs> and I just want to make it clear. No. <laughs> okay. It's all just personal stuff. That's all. Okay. Personal. All right. The, the existing garage, what, what's the purpose of that then? Well, my wife will not leave the house and go and walk to her car. So it's kind of there. It's, it's built into the house. It's, a, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's sitting on the left-hand side looking at the front. Right. And uh, truthfully, I think without that garage appearance on the house, it wouldn't look very good. So she kind of got me pulled and pushed on that, but finally she says, I'm not going outside to get in my car. <laughs> so here I am. It's good for her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's the boss. <laughs> I guess she is. Well, <laughs> you, by what you're proposing in this new garage is actually a two-car garage. Yes. Okay, and you did say that even at 24 by 24, it would be tough to walk around the two you know, well, you, vehicles if they're in there. Well, we have the problem now with two in the, in the garage we're in. Uh, door interference, everything's there. Same thing happens down there, except... I'm in control of how far the door is open down there. You know, we, oh. we, we can manage that. That's the man cave down out there. I uh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, uh, the fact that your driveway to this new garage area is separate from the other one. It took me a minute to find it. I didn't realize when I, when I studied the map a little bit better, I thought, oh, that looks, that looks very nice. So, again, my compliments to the way the property looks, too. I think it it's, looks great. Thank you. And uh, I think that um, that whole, I had never actually been down Bocart that far before. Uh, probably because most of the properties on that street are originally big enough so that you don't have to have a variance every time you want to do something. Yours is unique because it's not, a, it's not an area of variance, or is it? I, I have a full half acre there. Yeah. Yeah. So... Very good. Nice job on the drawings. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Is there anybody here who would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Seeing none, we'll close this case and move on to the next one. Thank, Thank you. you.
Case CB 1306-4, upon the matter of request by Michael Reed for an area variance to construct a two-story addition with less than required front setback on premises 454 per day of in an R3 residential district. Michael Reed, 454 Pert Avenue. Um, we're just here to request a variance for the setback on the addition that you guys have got plans for. Uh, the problem that we're running into is if we, because of the, the nature of the lot, it's kind of pie shaped. If we move the, the, the property back or the um, addition back, then you won't have enough side variance, side, side clearance. Um, and it, currently will match up with the front of the house and be offset by about a foot from the current house, which I believe is 23.9 instead of the 30 foot that's required. Um, we're also going to be converting the closed in porch to an open air porch, which was originally on the uh, property and it just looks like somebody uh, at one point in time stuck some windows in there and threw some, some plywood up and <laughs> siding on it and said, there we go, we have a closed in porch. Um, so we'd like to take it back to what the original design was and bring back some of that original character but we just had a, a little guy, and there's four of us living in that 1,100-square-foot house right now, and when we lose that front porch, it, 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 that uh, space that isn't officially ca uh, counted in the, uh, the, floor, the floor plans, we just have lost probably 200 square feet of just storage and recreation area for, for the teen, my teenage son who lives with us. So we're just looking for that garage space, really so we can get the... Uh, the, the room above it to be used as a study rec room general area. So, so if I'm if I'm uh, not mistaken, the house is going to be level or equivalent to the house existing right now. The setback because it uh, is different than what it was when the house was originally built would be the only reason he needs a variance. Right, because there's a minimum of 30 feet. And but the house is, is already... Doesn't have 30 feet, correct. Right, so he's basically building an addition next, the same line away from, right. the same variance, the same setback right. off the street. The five-foot setback on the right side of the house, that's okay. That's good, yeah. Okay. I think this is, we discussed this yesterday and. uh it's, this is going to be, this structure will totally block the backyard. There's no other way to get to the backyard except through the garage. So he's going to have a, a garage door in front and back. Correct. Yeah, because we, we currently boat, have a, a boat and we'll actually pull it through the garage so it's not setting out in front of the house like it currently is. They, they wind up there or under the carport, which is going to be removed. Um, and that would allow us access to the backyard, be able to, to take the boat and park, park it out back so it's not just you know, an eyesore sitting in the driveway. There was something that came up that I think is important for you and anybody that's watching these proceedings regarding the zoning requests. Uh, the, this is a question now. I'm not making an accusation here whatsoever because I don't know. But according to one of the pictures I've seen, your your sign that talks about the public hearing oh, yeah. may have been put toward the back of the... Uh, it, it was in the front yard, and then when a boat got moved, it just got stuck too far back. It should have, been, it should have stayed out front, and it, it was for several days, and then when the boat got moved, it just slipped my mind to bring it back out front. That's kind of what I thought, but I, yeah. I wanted to bring it up because sometimes somebody, somebody doesn't like the looks of the sign, so they're going to kind of hide it right. somewhere. And that's not, that doesn't work. And what can happen in a case like that, if the public doesn't have a viewing of the sign, your application could be just tabled for a month so they can get the sign out there where it can be, where it can be seen. That's just a matter of information for anybody. Are there any other questions? Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Seeing none, then we'll close this case. Donna, and we'll go right to the next one. GB 1306-5, upon the matter request by Sarah Wilson Sherwood for an area variance to erect a six-foot high wooden side yard fence exceeding maximum height allowable on premises 168 Washington Avenue in an R1 residential district. Hi. 
Hi, um, I'm Sarah Wilson Sherwood. Um, I live at 168 Washington Avenue. I'm here to request, I currently um, am on a corner lot and our backyard is fenced in by a four foot cedar fence that is currently in rough shape. <laughs> so um, our neighbors um, approached us and asked if we'd be interested in replacing it, which we were planning on it. And we decided to try to match what they have, and it's a six foot, so it'll give us more privacy as well as um, theirs property. And if I'm correct, it's going to look exactly the same yes. as the existing one? Uh, it's actually nicer. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a little more architectural. Um, it has like copper tops and uh, kind of like a graded look at the top. Oh, is that what you meant, the neighbors, or our current one? No, the neighbors. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes, our neighbors. Exactly. Yes, exa it's the same um, people who installed theirs. I can certainly see why that uh, would add to your privacy. Yes. It's kind of, things are kind of, look kind of close in right? that corner. <laughs> it's a little tight. Yeah. I also like the idea that I'm seeing Japanese uh, maple trees and rhododendron bushes and that type of thing. It helps soften the, right. the view of the fence. So, the trees are going to stay. Yes, we love those. <laughs> are there any other questions about this? Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? Seeing none, we'll close the case. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll go on to the next one. I just want to point out there was a letter of support from, yes. that was with this, 154 Washington Avenue. Okay. Upon ZB 1306-6, upon the matter of request by Timothy McGillary, for an area variance to construct a front deck entrance with less than required front setback on premises 358 Spencer Road in an R2 residential district. Hi, I'm Timothy Miori, 358 Spencer Road. Uh, we currently have an awning with a, a cement slab in front of our house, and it just it doesn't look appealing. And we figured, I've been there almost 10 years now, the wife would figure, put like a truck stacking on top of it. We're not going to destroy the underneath of it. We're just going to leave it as it is. Put a 12 by 6 in front of it, or actually on top of it. Remove the awning, and then when the uh, decking is complete, put PVC railing around it and have a 4-foot section with two steps going up to it. So the, it looks like the variance is 3.8 feet. Is this a, from a, the setback from the front? Because I, I got the impression you were just building over the old... Yeah, we're building over the existing. The existing yeah. cement slab is about 11 feet in width and comes out about four and a half, maybe five feet, depending on where you measure because it's an oval shape. No. And then now it's going to be six out and 12 across, yes. right? Yeah. 12 across the uh, width of the house and six feet out. Right. So you're right, Russ. It's the setback, Front setback. is the issue. Front setback. Okay. Yeah. Let me make a suggestion. Where you've asked the board um, to allow you a setback for a front deck, if you could change the word front deck to front porch, I think it would be much more acceptable well, to the board. I, would you accept that? I guess so. I guess because I guess the terminology, when you say porch, you have like a, a covering over it. Uh, eventually, when we uh, do down the line have siding put on, we may have a little uh, okay. put over the <clears throat> front uh, of the door, but currently, it's not going to have any covering of any type. And that's why I really didn't consider it a porch, because porches usually have, like, a covering over I it. would just, as a, as, as a point oh, huh. of, of law, advise the board that you could consider this to be a front porch, given the dimensions and the appearance. Hmm. Any questions? No. Seems to me that this would be quite a nice improvement to the front yes, of the house. very nice. Yeah. Is there anyone here that would like to speak in... Uh, Opposition to this application. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in support? And, and also I did have, I talked to all my neighbors who were very friendly and they've known that I've done much improvement to the house for the last 10 years. 
had him sign a little yep. waiver saying that we understand what Mr. and Ms. Miori want to do and they uh, will agree it would add to the uh, aesthetic of the house. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Chuck Foster, 342 Bocard. I used to live on Hartwick Road, very close to where he's at. Uh, when we moved in, every house had a little stoop on the front, and if it was raining, you couldn't go outside. You, you know, it, it, was, it was ridiculous. We moved from there 20 years ago. In the process, when we moved, they were seeking variances, putting these little porches on the front of those houses, and they look 100% better, you know, once that happens. I mean, it's, those are plain Jane houses built back in the 50s, and... Uh, what he's doing and what my neighbors did, I, I moved out then. Uh, neighborhood doesn't look the same anymore. Looks nice. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the application? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to the application? Seeing none, then we'll close this case. Just, uh, note oh. that we've got 11 signatures from the neighbors and a sign letter of uh, approval yes that's right um, this came with the with the application that's, that's always bad. a good thing to get especially something that's right out front like that if the neighbors are okay with it <coughs> that yeah. means a lot as I said a lot of the houses they they also wanted the same thing but they were afraid of you know because they know the town law and they didn't really know what had to do by hopefully me doing this it will like spread out, you know. As you know, our neighbor Carol, she probably has one of the best gardens in the uh, in the neighborhood. And she said, like, anything you can do to make that neighborhood better, go ahead and do it. No, they weren't afraid of the zoning board itself, were they? <laughs> <laughs> we, we can be pretty. You want to be a friendly <laughs> board. <laughs> well, Twenty years ago, you weren't. That was then, and this is now. <laughs> For my time. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Sure. We'll move on to the next case. Last case. <coughs> ZB 1306-7. Upon the matter request by Joseph and Marianne Picaretto for an, area, for an area variance to construct a 12-foot by 14-foot shed exceeding maximum lot coverage allowable on premises 179 Kearney Drive in an R1 residential district. Hello. I'm Joe, Joe Picaretto, 179 Kearney Drive. Um, it was changed, Donna, to 12 by 16. That's how it went in, actually. And with the letter of the tent and the diagram. Right, it did. So I'm asking for a 12 by 16 shed. Um, is uh, If you saw the diagram of the shed and pictures that were attached to it, I also have colored pictures here. If I could pass that around to you so you can take a little bit better look of it. Of my yard. Where the shed is going to be located in the yard, it's my, the yard I have 12, uh, 12 foot hedges on the north side. Uh, I have 20 foot ar arborvitaes on the uh, west side and uh, six, six and a half on the uh, east side so it's completely surrounded by um, greenery and also I had uh, the neighbors uh, next door to me behind me across the street from me signed uh, for uh, what I wanted to do I showed them what I wanted to do um, also it's not just a uh, uh, throw you up shed. It's uh, called a post and beam shed. Very well constructed. Um, I need the room for my garage is only 19 by 25, so I have the depth, but I don't really have the width. And with everything that I have, I have all kinds of ladders and uh, three, long, two lawnmowers, a tiller. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. I cannot pull two cars into the garage. I need to get two cars in the garage during the winter time, and the width is just. It's just not enough. So that's why I'm asking for the 12 by 16. I have a 32-foot uh, extension ladder that will fit in there um, on, the, on the length. Um, I'm going to be compliant with all the easements and setbacks. The only 
the reason why I had to go for the variance that I found out when I went for the permit was um, my house, the, peri uh, the perimeter of it, the inside is just under 2,100 square feet, but if you do the, per the perimeter, it's like 25 and change. So it goes over the set amount by, I think it was like 100 uh, and 36 square feet. So putting in the 12 by 16, I'm gonna, it's going to be 198, so it's going to be bringing it up to uh, 328 square feet on the lot itself. Again, you know, neighbors, you know, they, they, it's a, no problem. They're not going to see it anyways, and the, the shed's going to be a good-looking shed. And again, um, a diagram that I had included in there showing you everything that I have that I'll be putting in the shed, and there's actually more. And if any of you have dro driven by my house or looking at the pictures there, uh, I do take care of my homes. Uh, it, it looks very well. I've been a Rundequoit resident for 35 years, built a house on Brentfield Circle, uh, and then we moved to this ranch uh, two years ago due to a couple surgeries I needed to get into a ranch. I just have one question. Sure. Um, more of a curiosity than anything else, because you were talking about the greenery, the shrubs, the, right. the tall hedges. But in the pictures, I'm seeing what appears to be a chain link fence right. along the hedges. Right. And my question is, on whose property are those actual hedges? Um, the hedges are on one side. It's on the 20-foot side, it's, uh, which would be the uh, west side. Those are mine. And the south side... Uh, it's a combination of the neighbors behind me and mine. And the uh, east side, it's my neighbors. But, you know, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, everybody has their privacy in that area. And where, it, where the shed is going to be put into, uh, if you had the, the sketch of the, the, uh, the property survey, it's in that back little corner there, and it's, there's trees and the shrubs, and it's like it's going to be tucked right in. It's on the southwest side of the It's going to be, yes, southwest corner. And again, it's not, and it has nothing to do with the, the, you know, the footage of you know, four foot or five foot or whatever it is. I'm going to be in compliance with all that. It's just because of the amount of building to be on Right. We right. found out his house, his house as it stands is exceeding the code right now. So anything he puts on needs a variance. We were surprised. It's over by 136 square right. feet. He said, well, how did that happen? It's like, I, yeah, I don't know. But the house is there. <laughs> I think it was a builder. The builder. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe things changed, too, on the setbacks. And that was built in 69. I, I don't know. When you were contacting neighbors uh, and getting them to sign the your, uh, uh, note. Were there any neighbors that did not sign that disagreed with it? Nope, not one that I've talked to. No. Nope. And just to show you, I have a couple extra books here if you want. There's four. That's the construction. Uh, uh, the guy that builds these uh, sheds, he has a uh, big place out in Sodus Point, and he's called Unique Garden and Sheds, and he actually builds cottages and tiki bars and all kinds of things, and he does good work. Now, the, the reason why I had changed it, I had 12 by 14, and then I changed it to 12 by 16. I was thinking my shed on Brentfield Circle that I put on, Back in 1988 was a 14, but it was a 16, and I needed the length for the ladder and everything else. So, well. Okay, that's about it. <laughs> Is there anyone here who would like to speak in um, support of this uh, application? Is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Hearing none, then we'll close the case. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll take, that's the last case for the Russ, docket. You might want to note that there was nine signatures from the neighborhood there, too. Nine signatures. Yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't know where they are, though. Shall we take a little short break? Or? Yep. Okay. Very good. Take a five-minute break. Here they are. All right. We'll resume at 8.05.
cases, uh, deliberations, in the order in which they appear on the agenda for those people still present. And I believe the only person who has left is the first one about the, uh, the sign on, on Ridge Road. So we will start with the, the next one. This would be the one involving uh, Mr. Conway and the deck. Anybody wish to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion on uh, 157 Shore Drive that uh, we give um, uh, the variance. Um, uh, it is uh, not going to hurt the overall uh, uh, appearance of the neighborhood. It is uh, um, it is self created because obviously they well it's kind of self created. It, it has a water issue in reference to uh, the time of the year and the amount of water in the pond or in the bay. Um, or the cove, um, so it's you know somewhat self-created because they want to park their boat there. Uh, I don't believe it's a significant amount of dock space uh, that we're adding. Uh, I don't think it'll hurt the uh, look of the neighborhood um, based on that criteria, and I th also think it'll help uh, some friendly uh, uh, neighborhood uh, functions. I would second that motion. Seconded. Yep. Yes. Uh, Robert Hammond. Uh, I guess we need to mention this is a type two. Yes. This is a, a type two action uh, according to Seeker. And uh, if you have questions about what Seeker is, there's a lot of it in the Rondequay Post this week. It's not spelled Seeker like S E E K E R, it's S E Q R A. And that's the type of action we have here, which means that it doesn't have any effect on the environment. Am I correct on that? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any uh, opposition and nays? I've got to think of the terminology here. And no abstentions? Okay. Two board members who are absent. And two board members are absent. That's correct. Mr. Hinman. Mr. Santora. Okay. Okay. Moving along. I got to get used to this. The next case is the one dealing with the uh, get my act together here, uh, Mr. Foster, and the, um, the the garage to be built on the already existing concrete slab behind the house. Okay, is there a motion on this one? Do it again. We'll do. We'll make a motion on ZB 1306-2, uh, 157 Shore Drive. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I will take that back. That was the last one. Um, ZB 1306-3, 342 Bocart Avenue. Um, this is the 24 by 24 garage in the backyard. Uh, I will make a motion that we approve this. Um, f again, um, the necessity for a garage versus the, um, you know, it's a self-created problem, but the gentleman does want a place to uh, uh, store some cars and also some of his personal belongings. Uh, it is not going to hurt the characteristic of the neighborhood because, as we all noticed, he keeps his yard uh, very well and uh, um, commendable, and also he is going to match the style of the garage with the style of the home and the existing shed. Um, it uh, will not uh, be an adverse effect on the environment, um, and uh, it won't change the characteristic of the neighborhood. Um, uh, based on that criteria, uh, also no neighbors uh, have any objection to it, um, which is a big importance sometimes in, in my mind. Um, based on that, I think we should approve it. I'll second it. 
I didn't see you second. I did. Oh, okay. 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 The south side of the board. Before we vote uh, on this, I just want to mention it's a type two, according to Seeker. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? And we still have two people missing. And the next case uh, is the 454 Pert Avenue. Um, again, type two action according to Seeker. And uh, Mr. Reed is right, is still here. So uh, does it, would anybody like to make a motion? Well, on before, this? before we make a motion, I, I think there's just a, a question of, with the sign not being visible for the uh, full period of the time. Are we on? on uh, this, is one. this is the one. This is the one. Yeah. This is the one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the sign's not visible for the uh, prescribed time. Thus, neighbors and so forth may or may not have seen it. Uh, the question is, if there's any legal ramifications to that before we vote on it. Actually, that it was I who brought that to the attention of Mr. Thomas, and um, the t the sign was visible, and I think that he clear he clarified the matter that it was fully visible throughout the majority of the period of time. And it was somewhat obstructed. I actually have a picture of it in a somewhat mm -hmm. obstructed po point, and it still could be seen. Okay. So if it had been a situation where the sign was completely hidden um, or wasn't placed up, I think we'd look at it differently. But the explanation was was fair, was fair and sincere, and um, again, it, it was still visible, although it wasn't as, as visible as you might have otherwise liked. But that's I think fine. I'll give you a legal opinion that he complied with the requirement. And that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, grant the variance as approved as applied for, and I'd like to uh, base it on the following findings. First, the benefit of extending the house cannot be achieved by any other feasible means because the property is already set back uh, at a distance that is less than the required setback currently. There will be no undesirable change in the neighborhood because, again, it will line up with the existing property. Uh, the request is not substantial, again, for the same reason. There will be no adverse effects on the environment. And while it might be self-created because they want to extend the house, it is lining up with the current property. I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Hammond. Okay. Lapari. Jeez. I knew that. All right. Is there any further discussion before we vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And uh, no abstentions? It carries. Some of that. Okay. Let me just finish my little form here. Real quick. All right. Moving on to the next one. One sixty eight Washington Avenue. Um, this is a type two uh, a type two request, a uh, type two action according to Seeker. And uh, can I borrow your pencil for just a second? I made out the wrong form. No, that's okay. Tough at the top, isn't it? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, 168 Washington Avenue, Type 2 Seeker, got that. Uh, is there anyone who would like to make a motion on this one? I'll make a motion that we approve. And uh, it's, it's going to be an improvement to the one that's already there. It's coming down. It's going to match the neighbors. It's going, to, it's going to come around the front. And being on the corner a lot, it's sort of tough. I can understand where you're coming from. When people go by you, they can see right in there. I don't think it's going to have any physical effect on the neighborhood. 
and it's it's not a substantial request. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Moving on to the next one. 358 Spencer Road. I'll make a motion that we approve the variances requested. Uh, I think that this is a nice improvement in the neighborhood. It's certainly not undesirable. It, it's, in my opinion, not substantial. Uh, there's certainly no adverse uh, physical or environmental effects. I guess you could say it, it's self-created because they want to improve their property, but what a nice improvement to have. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, I would uh, uh, vote that we approve this variance. And I'll I would comment that it's not a deck, it is a porch. I'll second that. Did I mention this is a type two according to Seeker? You did not. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's so ordered. That was seconded by Mr. Antini. And finally, we are now to the last case of the evening. Second. Well, second to last. I know we have the other one to do for the sign. But this is the one on 179 Kearney Drive. This is a Type 2 action for seeker purposes. And... Um, who would like to make a motion for this? I'll make a motion. Uh, 179 Kearney Drive, that would be uh, ZB1306-7 on the matter of a um, shed in the backyard. Um, the, the variance is not substantial. Um, the, it will not be an adverse effect on the neighborhood. It is a self-created problem because the gentleman would like and needs a shed in his backyard. Because his house is so large on the lot, lot that the percentages um, were just a hair over, uh, actually based on the house, so I don't think that is enough reason to deny the uh, folks from having a shed. I believe the shed is a good-looking shed, and it will uh, enhance the look of the uh, backyard. Um, it is not an environmental issue. Um, based on the criteria, I think we should approve it. I'll second it. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. And no one's abstaining. So this carries, and that concludes this particular request. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, that means that we're back to the... We're back where we started from. To the sign, yes. Okay, this is a matter dealing with the, uh, the signage at uh, 1490 East Ridge Road, and this is Type 2 also, Type 2 action according to Seeker. Is there uh, anyone wishing to make a motion? I would like to uh, make a motion that we deny the request for a variance based on the following findings. Uh, first, the benefit can be achieved by other means, and namely there's already going to be signage all over both sides of the building. This is right at the corner of Kings Highway and East Ridge Road, so it's going to be highly visible. The signage on the building will be visible, so there will be a way to attract customers. This is not a McDonald's where people are going to be 
there's going to be a lot of foot traffic where people will need to see the sign. When individuals are going here, presumably they'll want to get here. So they should be able to find it without that additional signage. Um, there will be an undesirable change in the neighborhood to add twice as much signage as they need when there's no signage already there. It would be substantial and it's entirely self-created. So for those reasons, I say we deny the, deny the request. Can we have a little discussion or do oh, we? But, uh, sorry, I'll put one more proviso on there. Deny it without prejudice to them if they'd like to reapply for a smaller variance. Um, I know there was discussion of a potential for a 48-foot sign, mm -hmm. but because we don't know the exact size, I think that instead of just granting a variance for some unknown amount, that we deny it without prejudice to them coming back for a, a, a less substantial request. Okay, we need a second, then we'll discuss. I'd second that one. Okay. Yep. Okay, so the motion is to, not, is to deny uh, the sign as, as presented uh, without prejudice so they can come back and resubmit the application for a smaller sign. So the reasoning behind this is really the size of the sign. It's just too, way, way too big for what the code allows. Um, does anybody else have anything to add to that? Okay, so this is the vote then to deny. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's a unanimous good vote. Okay. Everyone is in favor of denying it, and uh, we still have two people absent. And I want to thank everybody for moving this meeting along and helping me out here. <laughs> nice job, Mr. Thomas. Yeah, oh, good job. Nice job. Thank you very much. I think then we are dismissed. You cleared the room out, however. Yeah. <laughs>